In this video, we're going to discuss the basics of working with the 3D view in OCalc Pro. Uh, the 3D view gives you a sort of general overview of your pole and shows you the relative geometries and how does the pole look in the, in the real world and gives you some feedback also about the current status of the pole. What's the worst wind direction? What's the current deflection? What's the magnitude of that deflection? So on and so forth. Um, to work in the, in the view, let's first talk about how do you change your perspective. If I press the left mouse button and move the mouse left and right, you'll see what happens is it's as if the entire view was in t inside a imaginary clear globe and I was moving my hand over the outside of that globe and rotating it so it's like a giant trackball. So as I move left the surface of that globe moves left and the item rotates. Up and down it rotates uh, up and down changing its its view of the pole. And if I use the mouse wheel I can zoom in and I can zoom out. Now if I'm zoomed in and I press the left mouse button, what I'm changing is not the position of the camera, but the pan and tilt of the camera. So if I press the left mouse button and I move down, the camera pilt, tilts down and looks down. And, and if, I, if I go up, it goes look up. So I can actually go in and look up at something from underneath instead of from below. If I ever get it, and if I continue doing that, you can see I can actually look above the top and then look at look up at it from underneath as opposed to looking down at it from up above. If I ever want to reset my camera position, I simply go to view, 3D view, reset camera position, and it'll go back to the default position. The little uh, control in the upper left hand corner is called the heads up display and what it tells me is what is the compass direction that I am looking. So for example, if I'm if I'm due north looking south, I'm looking at 180 degrees, and if I'm due south looking north, I'm looking at zero degrees. So it's the compass heading of where I'm looking, 340 degrees. Also, what's the notional height above the ground of the camera? The camera is currently 55 feet above the ground. This crosshair tells me I'm looking slightly down, and this crosshair tells me I'm looking straight ahead. So the pan and the tilt are indicated here. So you see as I move the pan, the tilt up and down, and left and right, the trackers move. Um, so it's pretty straightforward to get exactly what I want. Now, if I'm in this view and I click on an object, so I'll click on the pole, you notice the pole becomes selected. It also becomes selected in my inventory view. Same with the cross arm and so on and so forth. So it's a pretty convenient way to uh, be able to select an item. And the inverse is true. If I select the pole in the, in the inventory view, I can in fact see that pole selected in the 3D view. But I can also do some editing operations. So, for example, let's say I'm going to go ahead and we have a situation here where clearly this is wrong. This wire goes right through the pole. Well, if I zoom in and I select that insulator, if I right click, what I can do is say all the things that I could have done if I right clicked it on the tree. So I want to edit and I want to go ahead and grab its tracker and I want to move it over. But if I want to be even cleverer about it, what I can do is hold the shift key down and then what I can do is move the mouse left and right and in fact the insulator will move left and right. So shift left button is left right. Now what happens if I'm on the other side? So I'm now looking at this guy from, from the other direction. So it's mirrored. Well now if I press shift you'll see it's going to go the wrong way. Well that's easy to get around. Press control shift and then it reverses the operation and now again it tracks with my mouse and I'm able to do it. Um, if I try to move something like this cross arm left and right that isn't allowed to move left and right, it just doesn't do it. But I can of course move a cross arm up and down. Um, that's done by pressing control and you see when I click the little up arrow indicates I'm moving up and down and now I can move the cross arm up and down by moving my mouse up and down. If I press the Alt key what I'm changing is not its uh, up and down or left and right axis, but its rotational axis. And so as I move the mouse left and right, it spins it around the pole. So it's pretty easy to just sort of do broad um, setups of your geometries this way. And I can also do things like drag and drop. So anything I can do between my catalog and my inventory view can also do it in the 3D view. So let's say that I wanted to take this uh, insulator and its two child, child spans. So I want to make a copy of it. Well, I grab it, I drag it, I drop it under the cross arm. Boom, it's made another one. And now drag it over to here and I've set up my pole 
nicely. If I take this insulator and drag it onto the pole, now what you're going to see is happen is, even though I'm dropping it at this point on the pole, it's a pin type insulator, so it knows that the only place I can put it, yeah, it wasn't a pin type insulator. Sorry about that. Is on the top. If I take the cross arm and drop it, it's going to try to put it in the exact spot that I dropped it. So if I drop it into the tree, so if I take this insulator, drop it into the tree, it automatically goes at the point on the pole where I dropped it. If I drop it in the 3D view, or excuse me, it automatically calculates the correct position to put it. If I drop it in the 3D view, what it's going to do is drop it wherever I say. So that's kind of useful. Like so. All right, so that's geometric, geometric editing in the 3D view. I also have full context menus, so if I right click, I can make a new poll, I can edit the uh, edit the poll, I can change its description, I can perform a substitute operation. Anything that I can get by pulling up the context menu in the inventory view, I can also do here. I can also put things in and out of my catalog. So let's say I want to let's say I want to take this cross arm and I'm going to make a subfolder demo. I want to take this cross arm and its children and I want to use it in the future. I can simply drag it out of there, drop it into here, and now it's available. And if I want to make a copy of it, I can do the same, take, drag it out and pop it back on again. So any sort of drag and drop and edit operations that you can perform in the tree views, you can also perform in the 3D view with the added benefit that you're simultaneously assigning the geometries based on the point where you dropped it onto the pole. Now that only works onto the pole, everything else works in the normal way.